Welcome to this video. We're going to solve a few problems from the homework. These are on equilibrium and tension. 16 kilogram block, its mass, has constant velocity of this as it slides to the right. The person is pulling on the block with 75 newtons at this angle. How do you know the block is in equilibrium? It's these magic words, constant velocity. It doesn't even matter how fast it is. If the velocity is not changing, if there's no change in the motion, there is not an unbalanced force. How do you know friction is acting on the block? Hmm, well I didn't until I read the question. No, I did, because if we look at the forces, the applied force of 75 acts at this angle. <clears throat> that applied force has a component pulling to the right, and it also pulls in a way up. But there's also gravity pulling down, mg, and there's a normal force. Why is there a normal force? Well, the person is not lifting the block off the ground. So the block is still on the ground, resting partly on the ground. And if block pushes down on ground, then ground pushes up on block. So why does there have to be a normal, uh, sorry, a kinetic friction force? Pardon me, just a friction force. Well, there has to be friction because right now, there's nothing pointing leftward to cancel out this rightward component. If the velocity is constant, then these two guys cancel gravity, and something has to cancel this right force. What is it? Friction. So together, all the forces balance out, and there must be friction. So we've answered these questions. We drew the diagram. Calculate the normal force. Well, to calculate the normal force, we will balance the ups and the downs. Just as we try to do in life, right? But we always uh, put absolute values around these. We don't want to worry about negative signs and do they cancel or not cancel. We're just going to make everything positive. So let me see. How many forces point up? There's Fn, and then there's this component. So that's what I plug in for the up force. How many forces point down? Just mg. So I have the two up forces, Fn plus, well, this component is 75 sine theta. Equals mass times 9.81, 16 times 9.81. I'm running across, running into my diagram here. I calculate, do the math, and I get 110.785, but I want two sig figs, just those two. So I leave it at 110. Part E, calculate the force of friction. Just as I balanced up and down, I balance left and right. There's only one force pointing left, friction, and only one force pointing right. It's this blue arrow, which is equal to 75 cosine 38. I calculate, and that's 59. On to the next one. A 19 kilogram block, except it's not, it's 11, the picture is correct, is suspended at rest by three ropes. They are labeled, the rope uh, tension in rope one equals the tension in rope two, and we know also that, uh, well, this should be stated, we're gonna use G equals 10. Draw all of the tension forces. Well, this rope one is normally shorter, but the end here has been stretched out and this end has been stretched out. So there is tension. The ends are getting pulled back. This is being pulled back to the middle where it normally would be uh, located. And this end is getting pulled back to its normal unstretched length. Likewise, the two ends of the second rope feel tension pulling back. And rope three, which is normally that long, has been stretched out. The end is stretched to here. The bottom end is stretched down. So there is tension pulling those ends back to the middle of the rope. We'll call this T1. We would call this T2, 
but it's the same as t1, they said. So no need for two variables. Let's just call both t1. And here is t3. There is another force, the force of gravity, of course. That's mass times g, which is 110. Calculate, oh wait, first, the intersection. At the intersection, at the knot, the three forces balance. How do you know? Well, because it's staying at rest. Calculate the ten tension, rope three. OK. We look at the block. There is one force pulling up on the block. It's T3. And one force, one force pulling down. So when we balance the ups and the downs, we see T3 has to equal 110 newtons. Remember, you can only balance the forces on one object. You can't put this force down into the picture because T1 doesn't act on the block. OK, calculate the tension in ropes 1 and 2. To do this, we have to use the y component, t1, t1. And as we've seen before, through alternate interior angles, this is 58 degrees. 58. So there are two of the forces. The third force is T3, if we look back. And we know that's 110. So when we try to balance left and right, well, we literally have T1 cosine 58 equals T1 cosine 58. And there's nothing we can solve for. We cancel everything out, and it says 1 equals 1. But we actually have information on the y-axis. So let's try to balance the y-forces instead. This y component is T1 sine 58. And so is this one, T1 sine 58. Sine 58. When I balance the ups and the downs, there are two forces that point up and one force that points down. What are the forces pointing up, pulling up on this uh, knot? Well, there's the y component of T1. So there's that force, and then there's this y component of the other T1. And then what pulls down? Just the 110 newtons. So let me plug in T1 sine 58 and T1 sine 58. That's supposed to be an 8. And on the right side, what pulls down? T3 with 110. We have two T1 sine 58s. So we divide both sides by 2. We divide both sides by sine 58. And we get 65 for T1. And this is also then the tension in rope 2, because they are equal. <clears throat> 3 is the same type of problem, but 4 is a bit different, because we have unequal angles. This means we will need to calculate, or we will need to balance, rather, the x components of these forces. We will balance left and right. But first, draw the tension forces. OK, the ends of the string. Each string has two ends, which are being pulled back toward the center of the string. And then there's gravity, mg. These two are t3. These are T2, and these forces are T1. OK, then. Calculate the tension. Well, what else do we know? The tension 1 is 250. The mass is not known. The tensions are not equal. Calculate the tension in rope 2. We do the same thing we always do. We balance forces. Now, we know T3 when we balance the up when we balance the up and down forces on the block, T3 points up, Mg points down, so T3 has to equal Mg. But that doesn't help us yet, because we don't know M and we don't know T3. So let's look at the knot instead. Here's the knot. T3, which equals Mg, pulls down. Then we've got 
these two forces at different angles. T1 has components, and T2 has components. The angle that T2 forms, if we imagine the alternate interior angles, alts, ints, as I call them for short, alternate interior. If this is 35, then this is 35. Likewise, if this is 55, then this is 55. So let's put that into our picture. This is 35. And this is 55. OK. We know T1. So let me take that away and put the force that was given. 250. 250. This x component has to equal this x component. So when I balance left and right, I have 250 cosine 30, uh, 55, that's this x component here, has to equal this component, which is T2, cosine 55. Nope, cosine 35. I divide both sides by cosine 35, and T2 comes to a final answer. of 175. If I round for sig figs, what do I get? Just two sig figs, so that's going to be 180. And this is the work for the part we were just looking at. This is how we solve for the tension in rope two. Okay, calculate the tension in rope three. Well, we've already used up all the information we can gain from the x-axis, from balancing left and right. Now, let's balance up and down and see what that yields. Okay, I look back at my picture. There are two forces that point up Right? There's this one and this one. So I add those together. What's the total downforce? Just mg. Well, my arrow is not very good then, is it? Because if I were to take this length and this length and add those together, this plus this, mg should be just as long as the sum. So maybe mg should be closer to that length. That's OK. My picture doesn't have to be accurate for this. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and solve. I balance up and down. I have this up component, which is 250. Hypotenuse sine the angle. The other up force is this one, which is T2 sine 35. And T2 is 175. Dot, dot, dot. Sine 35. And those two things together balance the gravity force. They balance mg. mg is going to be m times 10. So just like before, we're using 10 for g. I divide both sides by 10. And the, uh, well, you know what? Yeah, we'll divide by both sides by 10. I'm calculating mass now. And what do we get? So I'm skipping one of the parts here, but that's OK. When I divide both sides by 10 to cancel out the 10, I get 30.5, which rounds to 31. So that's part D. What do I do for tension in rope 3? This is just mg. And if I look back to my picture, that's what I wrote down here. And again, the reason T3 equals mg is because the up force on the block balances the down. So I multiply the mass by g, and I get 31 newtons.